values. You know, J.B. Hunt, like, increased pay by, like, 30% in the late 90s, and then immediately after, their safety record, like, increased, like, in, yeah. in a positive way. And it was pretty obvious why. It's because you're retaining the good drivers, you know, the veteran drivers who are safer drivers, and you're also attracting a higher quality pool of applicants by offering more money. So just, I mean, it, it, it's just so clear how just more money can solve, like, not all the problems, but a good chunk of the problems. It just comes yeah. down to paying the workers. Welcome back. We're going to spend a little time now looking at a federal appeals court ruling that involves oil tanker drivers and overtime pay. The decision could have broader implications. And joining us to discuss are Tyson Fisher and Mark Schremer of Landline Magazine. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Tyson, you did a deep dive on this case. It's out of Texas. Let's start with the basics here with, I guess, who's involved and what's at the heart of this dispute. So this involves intrastate uh, oil field truckers in Texas for the most part. And it's really important to emphasize that intrastate because that's going to play a big role in this story. But it, it, essentially, the, the, the basic facts of the case are undisputed, which is these are these are truck drivers who are picking up oil at an oil field in Texas, and they're delivering that to a pipeline also located in the Texas. There's no crossing of state lines. It's the whole thing is in Texas. And so the issue with the case is that the, uh, that the company called Ace Gathering, they have not been paying these truck drivers overtime due to the over the federal overtime exemption that's usually reserved for interstate truck drivers, and so the question is, well, how? <laughs> you know, how how is this happening? And is that that's exactly why they filed a lawsuit because these are for the most part intrastate truck drivers, and so. What the company is arguing, and this is really the heart of the case, um, is that although the trucking operation itself is interstate, the oil, the product, the cargo has a final destination somewhere else, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you're picking up the um, the oil at the oil field and you're dropping it off there, but that's not at the at the pipeline. But that's not where. The journey ends the for final the oil. Destination. The yeah. final destination is usually a refinery, like in Louisiana, or going to the foreign export market. But the point being is the uh, the oil doesn't stop, and so the question is, well, does does that count? <laughs> you know, for interstate trucking, and what the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals found is is that yes, is that the when it comes to determining whether or not you are exempt from overtime pay, it doesn't matter what your specific leg of that journey of the cargo is. In this case, the truck drivers driving interstate. What matters is the origins of the cargo and the final destination of that. And so, with these truck drivers, they were involved with the transportation of the oil that was going to end up eventually, you know, uh, crossing state lines. And so, because of that. Technically, they are involved in interstate commerce, although their specific part of that operation is interstate, they are still involved in the transportation of something that's going to be crossing state lines, and so therefore, you are exempt from overtime pay. So, it sounds like a crazy loophole, yeah. uh, and it's because it is, and it gets really deep into the weeds as far as how do we get here, as far as the legalese and the statute and, and whatnot, and that's kind of what the Fifth Circuit kind of picked apart, was this, you know, how do we, how do we get here, because this part of the federal exemption it doesn't explicitly say what this court has been saying, right? Right. Although courts have interpreted this way for quite some time. So this is legal precedent, you know, and this is what the Fifth Circuit was going off of. And, and that's a very important distinction because within that, uh, that, that Fifth Circuit panel uh, uh, opinion that was written, one of the judges writ, uh, wrote a, uh, a, a concurring statement, right? So he agreed that this was the right decision for them, but he also kind of hinted, it's like, but it's like, he, the only reason why that they were making this decision was because of the legal precedent. They're bound by precedent. But when you look at the statute, when you look at the 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 the, the history of the statute in the text and the Department of Labor rules kind of giving guidance on how to apply this rule, 
it's a little bit more ambiguous. It's a little bit more confusing. It's just that the courts in the past have interpreted it this way. And so this is, therefore, this is how we're going to do it. And so it kind of leaves open this, this uh, I don't know, leaves room open at least for the, uh, at least the federal government in terms of either the Department of Labor or maybe Congress itself to go back to the drawing table and to be more explicit onto how we apply this rule. Because right now, the way it's being applied, it, it, I, I, in my opinion, this is more of a letter of the law versus the spirit of the law, hmm. which is the reason why we have this interstate exemption that has to do with you know highway safety, which we can argue all day long, and we probably will here in a little bit. <laughs> that's BS. That's not at all what's happening. But we'll just go ahead and let that slide. And uh, I'll, the last thing I'll say about this real quick is to give you an example of how this loophole doesn't make sense. So let's say you have two trucking operations. One is a Nebraska. Nebraska trucking operation where they're picking up, uh, you know, corn at a cornfield in Nebraska, and they're sending it to a distribution center in Nebraska, and all that corn is going to be distributed to grocery stores uh, in Nebraska. So the origins of the corn is Nebraska, and the final destination in Nebraska, all interstate, those truck drivers get uh, overtime pay. And now compare that to this oil field example I just gave you, where they don't get uh, overtime pay. From the perspective of those two uh, truck drivers, whether it's Nebraska or uh, Texas, from their perspective, their operations are pretty much mm-hmm. identical in yeah. terms of where they're going to, yeah. you know, interstate. There's nothing different about what they do except for where the cargo they're dropping off, where it ends up, which is like, why do they care? Why does it matter? How does that pertain to them? It really doesn't. It's just this technical legal loophole exempts the oil field drivers from overtime pay, whereas those corn uh, drivers get the overtime. It makes no sense whatsoever. And it's like, man, if only there was a way we can solve this problem, if there was, I don't know, some bill in Congress right now, for example, (laughs) that might solve this issue. So, yeah. You just lobbed it right up for Mark <laughs> Schrimmer there. Yeah, the, the the bill you're talking about is a Guaranteeing Overtime for Truckers Act, um, H.R. 6359. We've covered this before. Um, I will say it has not gained a lot of traction since it was introduced last yeah. November. Perhaps cases like this will bring attention to it. But essentially, and Mark, you've, you've covered this quite a bit um, over the past several months. This bill would, as Tyson alluded to there, kind of clear that confusion, right? Yeah, because basically what it would do, instead of having to argue whether or not um, that you're interstate or, or interstate in these, you know, there would be no exemption. Uh, that That's what it would do. Uh, company drivers, uh, motor carriers would uh, now be obligated to pay them for their time over 40 hours uh, in a work week, just like Pretty much everybody else, yeah. you know, uh, any, you know, uh, you know, blue collar construction jobs, anything like that, similar types of jobs, they are paid for the extra time. Uh, truck drivers, uh, you know, go uh, to uh, shipping and receiving facilities. We, uh, you know, we talk about detention time all the time. They're waiting for hours. Um, and meanwhile, those people that are unloading their trucks or loading them up are, are probably getting paid uh, overtime. And uh, truck drivers, uh, a lot of times, are not getting paid anything at all because uh, everything is so uh, mileage-based um, uh, for for most uh, truck drivers. You know, they as they the old adage, uh, you know, if you're not earning, if the if the wheels aren't aren't turning, is is what what they say. And it, it all comes down to what what the Got Truckers Act uh, would do is it would help put value on a truck driver's time. And just doing that would, I think, help alleviate a lot of the problems that we see in the trucking industry right now. Yeah. And let's be clear, because the bill as it stands right now would guarantee overtime pay for employee yeah, truck drivers, company right? drivers, yeah. which, you know, owner operators out there may be thinking, this doesn't apply to me. You know, why, why, you know, why do I really, or why should I care about it? But as you kind of point out, you know, it's kind of like a rising tide lifts yeah. all ships kind of thing. Yeah, no, it definitely would. And and if you just put that as the standard of that, you know, that they have to uh, value 
uh, driver's time with the company drivers. That's going to move rates up and that's going to help owner operators uh, as well. And like I said, you know, when I talk about some of the problems that are in the trucking industry uh, right now, ones I look at that we hear all the time is detention time, as I mentioned. You know, it's the time that uh, truck drivers are out there uh, sitting for hours. They're not getting paid. It hurts uh, the supply chain, hurts the efficiency of it. There's so many issues and, and lost money and, and wages straight out of a driver's pocket when that stuff's going on. If those drivers are sitting there getting overtime hours while they're sitting there, um, if you actually value all of a driver's time, uh, if you start doing that type of thing, um, there's going to be the pressure to, we better get this truck unloaded because, you know, somebody's getting time and a half right time now. Time is literally money yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 you know, well. if you yeah. can do that. Um, what, what do we hear all the time from the large fleets? There's a driver shortage. Well, the news is there's not a driver shortage. What there is, is there is a huge driver turnover problem because of the lack of pay, poor working conditions, and they can't keep drivers employed. So they either go off and, and work for a small carrier or get out of the trucking uh, business in, in, entirely. Um, and again, if you start uh, making um, you know, the, the profession more lucrative and, and actually value your time, you know, it's a hard job. They're out on the road for uh, for weeks at a time, often, um, all these hours. And, you know, if, if they're not getting paid for all of it and you're not even be able to get uh, overtime wages, you can see why a lot of people go, you know, maybe I just go try to, you know, work somewhere back in back in my hometown and be able to, you know, go to my kids' ball games and, and do that type of thing. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to think that. The other part of it that I would bring up that if you value a truck driver's time and, and you pass uh, this bill, other thing it'll do, we hear all the time about speeding and they want to put speed limiters uh, on trucks. And But again, we go back to the system where, where we're paid by the mile and it's all incentivized to get there as fast go, as you go, can. Go. Yeah. If you're actually valuing all of the hours that a driver works, then – they don't have to push it up. You know, they don't have to, you know, speed limiters, one of the reasons they don't work is this idea, okay, we slow it down to 65. So now in the 75 mile an hour zone, I can only go 65 miles an hour. So now I'm in a 45 mile an hour construction zone and I'm okay, trying make to make my time. money. Yeah. So you're, you're going to go 55 through it. And so you, you haven't helped the the problem you've still you've probably created a more dangerous situation. You've just shifted it to a different yeah different area and yeah and 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 really make it's obviously less dangerous for everybody to go seventy five than it is for a truck to go fifty five through a construction zone that's supposed to be forty five. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's pretty clear. Um, so if you do th these things and and you you know you support this type of bill, I I do think that it would help in all three of these areas and it would clear up this this weird legal loophole and and save some time and money in the courts on stuff like this too yeah i mean and just to kind of echo what you've been saying i mean that's exactly why um everyone should care about this overtime exemption with employee drivers is why mm -hmm. owner operators should yeah. care the entire industry should care about this we should want employee drivers to get overtime paid for the reasons why you just explained it has cascading effects on the entire industry and the research is clear and i wrote about this earlier this year i talked to a, a professor who has done the research on uh, driver pay and how it affects highway safety yeah. specifically and, and the evidence is clear which is you the more if you pay drivers what they deserve you know if you pay pay the drivers more, um, the, the industry gets better as far as safety goes. You know, J.B. Hunt, like, increased pay by, like, 30% in the late 90s, and then immediately after, their safety record, like, increased, like, yeah. in a positive way. And it was pretty obvious why. It's because you're retaining the good drivers, you know, the veteran drivers who are safer drivers, and you're also attracting a higher quality pool of applicants by offering more money. So just, I mean, it, it, it's just so clear how just – more money can solve, like, not all the problems, but a good chunk of the problems. It just comes yeah. down to paying the workers. Yeah, well, and yeah. FMCSA will say exactly what he said, too, to back up that research, that they've said over and over that uh, more experienced drivers are are safer drivers. They have that mm. data to, to prove that, and obviously the more experienced drivers are probably getting paid more. Um, it, it, all, it all goes through. I mean, 
Um, you know, if you make this a job that people want to be in, more more safe drivers will stay. Yeah, and I'll add to that a valued a, a driver who feels valued is a safe driver right. as well. It's all. It all comes together in the end Interconnected. Uh, for more details on this case, uh, the Got Truckers Act and more, you can check out Tyson and Mark's work at landline.media. And findingfortruckers.com, a great resource if you want to reach out to your lawmakers and educate them on this, because I guarantee most of them don't understand this, and you can help educate them there. Tyson, Mark, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. We're, gonna about to, we're about to run into a break here, but hang tight. Landline Now is back in just a moment. 